Hey everyone, Sam Mackay here from Enterprise DNA. Now I want to show you a really cool technique here around finding the previous value, but accounting for weekends and holidays. So where where this came up actually is in this epic post uh, within, um, sorry, I'll just get it up here, within the Enterprise DNA forum. So um, uh, it looks like, so Brian, one of our Enterprise DNA experts, put in a lot of effort trying to find the solution. Um, and what the, what the scenario was, right, and I'll, I'll, I'll bring it back into Power BI here and we'll, 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 we'll work through it, is that we wanted to, the, the um, uh, the user, the um, developer of this report wanted to calculate the percentage difference, right? But, but we didn't want to just look at the percentage difference one day after the next. We wanted to make sure that it was only for when, say, um, something was open, uh, like a store was open and the store's only open from Monday to Friday. So when you get to Monday, what you need to be able to do is go and grab the previous value, right? Now, what makes this a little bit more complicated is that we're actually looking at percentage values. So we first of all need to, to calculate the percentage, then we need to go and work out our logic to go and retrieve the value from the prior day, right? The prior day that the store was open. And so here you need to take into obviously account the weekends, but also holidays if they, um, if they are a part of your date table as well. Now, quick tip. If you want to include holidays within your date table, come and check out the, uh, in, in the forum, come and check out the, and this is, I've created a video on this, this is how I create my date tables, right? Go, go to the M code showcase and go to extended date table. And this is the, this is um, the ultimate date table, which has been created by one of, um, one of our experts as well, Melissa. Uh, this is constantly updated and it enables you to create holidays okay there is a separate video on our channel as well that goes through how to add the holiday table to this particular um, code okay so you just need to input this code first then there's a, a separate section where you can input your holidays now once you do that you can then create a formula which goes and calculates up a result or calculates up say a um, uh, well, it, it calculates up a result, but it changes the context in which it um, shows the result. So, for example, we're calculating, if you look at this particular result here, you'll see that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it takes us to the next day, the next day, the next day, the next day. You see here that it's just sort of moving across here, which is great, right, in terms of, in terms of the calc. But when we get to the next Monday, we can't go and use a time intelligence function here, right, because... Um, you know there is a there is a there is a time intelligence function called previous day, but um, the that doesn't work when you're trying to skip days, right? And you have to bring in holidays, etc. And so what we're trying to do here is we're trying to say, okay, on Monday I want to go and retrieve Friday or the very last day that we were open. Okay, now let's go to the end formula here because what 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 in this in this particular solution solution it's been built up one after the other but here is the ultimate formula that you would need to actually make this work okay now let's just have a look at each each part of it right so it, it looks a little bit more complicated than it actually is okay but um basically what we're trying to do here we're trying to get the current date but then also go and grab the previous date, taking into account all of the um, all of the things we're, which we're trying to avoid, like weekends and holidays, right? And so we still, what we're trying to do is we're, we're trying to ca calculate up the max date, but then we have all of these, um, this list of, um, l this logic that we need to iterate through um, within the filter function, right? So we have calculate, work out the max date, but change the context in which we calculate that max date. We want to filter filter, and go through all go through all dates, which is what, what we're doing with the all function here. Then we only want to look at dates which are below the, which is the SEL date or the current date. That's another way to think of it. We want to avoid any days of the week which are, set, uh, I think zero is Saturday in the date table. Avoid all the days of the week which are uh, Sunday, which I think might be six, uh, yeah, it might. Uh, yeah, yes. No, I think I think Sunday is zero and Saturday is six. Then um, also, if it's a holiday, equals to false, and that's where that holiday 
um, holiday part of the date table is really, really key, right? So you see how you can embed all of this logic into the filter function to actually retrieve a value. And then when we have the max date or the previous date, well then we just need to insert it into this part of the formula, right? So here we're saying, okay, go and calculate up what the orders were delivered on the previous date. Again, we're using filter all dates, date equal to previous date. So we're only going to retrieve the order value from the very previous date. And then what we've um, done here, delivered quantity. And this is, this is a, um, again, doing exactly the same technique, but getting the comparison value, the total quantity. And then we're going to divide the previous, um, the, this variable by this variable to give us the percentage result of the previous day, right? So you see here that it's it's basically to, to get to retrieve this, it's jumping back to these two values here dynamically to then give us the change. And then if we want to work out the difference between what it was on the on the current day and the the next the very next day, well then we've got those two values, right? So all we've got to do is go percent delivered versus the previous value. Um, in this particular case, it looks like there's a there's another one that which hasn't been brought into this particular table. But what what um, I think Brian did in the solution is, it, is he originally had it all uh, within uh, different measures, but he's then said, okay, well this is what it looks like if you put it all together. So so I I like that. I like it how you build it up first, um, so that you you understand each individual part of the formula because it's hard to. Uh, really dissect what each variable is doing um, in a big formula like this so if you build it up first in individual measures you can put them next to each other within a table and then once you've got the right result if you don't need any of those intermediary measures well then you can aggregate them all up into one measure using variables right and this is quite a clean way to um, to use this uh, to, uh, quite a clean way to showcase this in, in, in this measure area so I think this is a really cool technique, right? And it's and it's not too difficult, but something to to have a have a really good think about. Now, uh, one other thing that I thought would be interesting to showcase here is that um, you see here that this is quite a long this is quite a long formula, right? Um, and what I want to showcase is I'm just going to go and copy it. I'm going to uh, showcase our DAX cleanup tool. So we've made a lot of recent updates to this tool and it is becoming it is becoming seriously awesome um so I'm, i've copied that entire formula and all i need to do is paste it in here go format and then so you see here that this is a slightly different format and i prefer i kind of prefer it actually it's a it's a it's slightly more condensed right um and uh to me this this reads easier it honestly does to me i mean there might be a few adjustments i might make maybe um but uh maybe but but the great thing is is you can actually edit it in here so i'm gonna i'm gonna bring this down to another row here um maybe i might put it out one actually so this is the only update i'm gonna commit it and now i have this um, new format and then i can just copy this code and bring it into here and copy over and i think that see that looks much easier to understand right in my in my view maybe you disagree but uh, I, I i definitely like the more condensed version okay so hopefully you enjoy that one um really exciting updates to the dax cleanup tool so so definitely check that out um if you if you haven't it's part of our analyst hub platform which we're making some huge updates to but hopefully um you know you got a lot out of me showcasing this technique to you just a few steps to it um, thanks to uh, Brian on the forum who who just literally provided some epic support in this thread. Um, you know, just 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 really uh, you know, just really putting a lot of effort to, to to help out. So you know, doing amazing work on there. Um, okay, all the best. Hopefully you enjoyed learning about this one. Definitely throw the video a like if you did. Really appreciate it. Uh, and uh, don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. Okay, all the best.